What a curiosity you are, wearing a man like a shell. You've awakened him, but you know nothing of him yet. Mortal Shell, Cold Symmetry's first ever studio release, is a dark fantasy action RPG with punishing combat, impressive aesthetics, and proper world building technique that promises a good time to those who are willing to learn how to survive in the harsh land of Falgrim. The story of Mortal Shell starts with the player character, dubbed Foundling, waking up in a foggy, watery abyss littered with cobblestone ruins of a long forgotten civilization. As the player moves through this tutorial area, they learn the game's simple yet vital combat mechanics. The first major mechanic is the Harden Technique, which serves as Mortal Shell's block ability. By pressing the left trigger, the player hardens into stone, blocking one incoming attack. When struck while hardened, the stone will break and the enemy will be staggered, allowing the player to follow up with deadly blows of their own. The player will need to master this Harden ability, often weaving it into their own combos and cancelling their attacks mid-swing. After facing off against the subtly named Hardern, the game's tutorial boss, the player is transported to the land of Falgrim. Once in Falgrim, the player is guided to a lone house on a hill. Here we meet Sester Janessa, who serves as both Mortal Shell's guide through the world, as well as the vendor who accepts tar and glimpses, allowing the player to level the shells they inhabit. On the roof of the house is a vendor, Vlas, and his pet cat. And yes, you can pet the cat. Also here is a shackled NPC named the Dark Father, who requests that you bring him sacred glands from the temples of the devout in order to heal him back to full strength and free him. Littered around the forest of Falgrim are shells, which serves as the game's class system. When combined with the weapons of Mortal Shell, there are a total of 16 different play styles the player can employ. Once the player discovers a shell, they inhabit that shell's form. Upon spending resources with Sester Janessa to earn a new passive or active ability for a shell, the player is treated to a bit of lore from that shell's previous life via several lines of voice dialogue. My vision blurred and went opaque. The whiteness consumed the world, leaving only a vague memory. I felt hands guide me, ushering me away. With each ability learned, the player learns more and more about the shell, painting a clearer picture of who that person was, what their goals were, and what might have happened to them that led to their demise. Some NPCs will even have special dialogue with certain shells, adding to the lore and world building of the game. Mortal Shell takes the player on a perilous journey through three distinct zones, each connected to Falgrim, which acts as a hub for the spokes. Areas can be done in any order, although the health and damage output of the enemies in each zone indicate that there is an intended order. The zones consist of the Shrine of Ash, a sweltering forge teeming with knights, ghosts, and magma-throwing demons sitting in pots of lava, the Crypt of Martyrs, a damp cave replete with skull-lined walls, Cenobite-esque enemies that pull swords out of their own flesh only to hurl them at you, and a surprisingly frigid Undercroft that feels both out of place, yet completely natural at the same time. Finally, there is the Seat of Infinity, an expansive area of near-endless towering obsidian structures that dwarf the player and its inhabitants. At the start of each area, the player will have the choice of entering a combat challenge with Hardurn, who is equipped with a new weapon. Upon defeating each iteration of the boss, the player receives the weapon and is able to upgrade it using materials found throughout the game. Choices of weapon include the Hallowed Sword, the Martyr's Blade, the Hammer and Chisel, and the Smoldering Mace. Each weapon commands a different playstyle, ranging from less damaging yet rapid attacks with the Hammer and Chisel, to sluggish but devastating blows with the Martyr's Blade. Additionally, if the player is able to save up enough tar, they can purchase the tools to repair the Ballista Zooka, a devastating ranged weapon that will send enemies flying backwards and often killing them with one bolt. The combat of Mortal Shell is punishing yet satisfying. Even the weakest of enemies deal huge amounts of damage and can easily overwhelm the player when they're out of position. Successfully parrying or even staggering enemies with a hardened ability will open them up to big damage. The parry window takes some time to get used to, but it sometimes feels like the animation of holding up the tarnished seal does not match the actual parry timing, causing frustration and unfair deaths. A day one patch has been promised by the developer, which hopefully improves this core mechanic. At the end of each area is a major boss fight accompanied by dark, brooding music. At the end of each major boss fight, the player is rewarded with a sacred gland. Upon extracting the gland from its host, the world around the player changes drastically, and they must backtrack to the start of the area, facing rearranged enemies, broken paths, and swarming darkness that is only illuminated by the crimson glow of the sacred gland on the player's belt. This drastic change in the world feels like an illusion has been broken, and the truth of the world has revealed itself to the player, but there is no clear explanation as to why this actually happens. The scarce amount of upfront information and storytelling in Mortal Shell 
leaves much to the player's imagination. Additionally, carrying a sacred gland causes a fog to fall over Falgrim, inviting hordes of beast-like enemies into the forest, which murder all of the humanoid enemies and lie in wait for the player, often ambushing them by jumping down from the trees or out of dark corners. To balance this added difficulty, the player can now open frog chests scattered around Falgrim, which often contain rare upgrade materials and new items that allow for quick switching of weapons. Whenever a player brings a sacred gland back to the Dark Father in Falgrim, they are rewarded with a new upgrade to their tarnished seal. After successfully parrying an enemy attack, the player's repost is dependent on which ability they have selected for their seal. The player has a choice of healing themselves by extracting life essence from the enemy, launching their true form at the enemy and dealing massive damage, or freezing the enemy, allowing the player to reposition and deal damage from another angle. Overall, the gameplay loop is satisfying, and with peril lurking around every corner, discovering new areas often leads to relief of finding Sester Genesis encampment, giving the player a much needed, albeit brief, moment of respite. That said, however, Mortal Shell feels surprisingly short, only taking about 15 hours to complete the first playthrough. The game does feature a New Game Plus option, allowing the player to bring all their items, shells, weapons, and upgrades into a fresh playthrough with scaled up enemies, additional upgrade opportunities, and renewed boss battles. What's interesting is that Cesar Janessa acknowledges that the player is in New Game Plus, which marks the first time I can recall an NPC being aware that they've met the player in a previous playthrough. As satisfying as it is to play, the game does have some issues. While both the Shrine of Ash and Crypt of Martyrs feel like natural extensions of Falgrim, the Seat of Infinity feels like it belongs in another game entirely. The art style and vibe of the area feel like they are from another world. While this may be the point, as it's alluded to in the lore that people search for this place to study its mysteries, it left me wanting more of the Seat of Eternity and less of any other place. While it is the longest area of the game by far, I was disappointed when it was time to leave, only to never experience another area quite like it. Hopefully there will be DLC, or even a sequel plan that explore more worlds like the Seat of Eternity, as it feels like one of the most ambitious and creative places I've visited in video games in a long, long time. Enemy variety in Mortal Shell is also lacking, with each area only featuring three to four different types of enemies, most of which are humanoid in nature. In Falgrim especially, where enemies are littered around innumerable campsites, fighting the same handful of enemies for several hours in the beginning of the game feels exhausting. Some enemies are just reskins of others, including the ghosts and fanatic enemies that can be found in every area of the game. The balance of enemy placement feels inconsistent as well, with the aforementioned Falgrim campsites being a mere staircase away from the Seat of Eternity, which then features vast swaths of obsidian landscape that is devoid of any life, leaving any completionist player such as myself feeling like they're wasting time searching every corner for treasure or new enemies. Things do tighten up in the subsequent areas of Seed of Eternity, only to fall back into the problems of Falgrim's overpopulation of enemies. Despite their creative design, even boss encounters don't pose much of a challenge since you can parry nearly all their attacks or, at the very least, exploit their AI enough to make them do the same attacks over and over. The length of areas is also inconsistent, but it's possible this is by design. Getting your bearings around Falgrim will take a few hours, but most of that is spent learning Mortal Shell's combat and dying to bandits and bear traps. The Shrine of Ash is the shortest area, which I completed in just over an hour, yet the Seat of Eternity took almost five times that amount. With only four total areas, having one super short area, a super long area, and a medium length area, left me feeling disappointed and wanting more. On Xbox One X, the frame rate does experience some stutter, especially when ghosts in the Seat of Eternity cast their terraforming ability. Stuttering also happens happens randomly when walking around areas despite there not being any visible activity. I also experienced a bug upon reposting an enemy where I got stuck in the floor and had to save and quit. Luckily, quitting and reloading your file places you back at the last place you visited Sester Janessa, but all the enemies you killed before resetting stay dead making it so you just have to retrace your steps to get back to where you were. Given that Mortal Shell was developed by a small core team of about 15 people, these shortcomings can instead be seen as building blocks for a bright future. It's abundantly clear that there are some big ideas and excellent core mechanics at play in the world of Falgrim, and the Mortal Shell could have more to offer as a franchise rather than a one-off game. Hopefully that comes true sometime soon, or DLC gets released at the very least. Mortal Shell is an excellent addition to any action RPG fan's library. Despite its short length and enemy balance flaws, the world of Falgrim is gripping, and the gameplay commands your undivided attention. Once the combat mechanics click for you, you'll find yourself spending less of your resources healing, and more on sending your true form out to pummel your enemies into submission. I hope to see more from Mortal Shell in the future, and I'm excited for what's next from Cold Symmetry as a studio.